Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye for now. So, so today's session, so, so many of you have seen this um, diagram before. We have uh, the, the bottom, uh, which is in duality. We have the, the middle, uh, which is a terrible cross, but it's supposed to signify balance. And then we have the top, which is the infinite, and you're the drop in the infinite. Uh, the bottom is the self-conscious. The middle is the unconscious. And the top is the superconscious, or self, soul, and source. The bottom here is in polarity. It's limited. It's your thoughts. The middle here is always seeking harmony, and it's your feelings. The top is seeking infinite, and it's uh, it's all information. It's all information. Now, what what I want you to to really um, you, you really you really get okay is uh, you're all of this. This is all, a, here's a self-portrait of you. <laughs> this, is, this is all you. And, uh, you know, you can think about them as different memories. You can think about them as different memories. You, you have uh, a bottom memory here that needs conditions, okay? It needs conditions. Then you have one up here, which is unconditional, okay? You need conditions. So, so quickly... You have a, a self-conscious perspective that lives in a world of polarity, okay, of growth, decay, and death, rebirth, growth, decay, death. Does that make sense? We, well, one thing that we all know is that we're alive, and we all know that, it, that things that are alive will die, don't we? We know, we know this. And, and so in this, in this realm, in this aspect of us, we live through polarity, okay? This is, this is a worldview where there's conditions. Uh, there's good that we think is good, and then there's things we think are bad. Wanted, unwanted, hot, cold. In order for something to exist, the opposite must exist as well. Does that make sense? I didn't make the rules, okay? I'm just sharing that what exists. And, and so what happens is when, when someone tries to create just from, uh, just from this bottom plane, okay? They, they don't realize that when they are in this plane, if they aim for one of the two, they're in a relationship with both of them. If they aim for abundance, saying that being poor is bad and abundance is good, they are simply in a relationship with all of that. Because abundance is just a, a separate asset. It's just a different frequency of poor. Let me put it this way. Where does cold stop being cold and become hot? Where, see, where does the water go from cold to hot? It's all a perspective, isn't it? Hey. And, and, and that's the same. So, so when, you, when you try to create down the bottom, you, you're, you're simply, you're in a relationship with that which you don't want. Does that make sense? You're in a relationship with, with what, you, what you desire to not exist. And, and therefore what happens is it, it, the pendulum will always swing. So, so in here, when you see this, you, know, you can always put a pendulum swinging to make sure that you remember that if you try to create through your limited self-conscious aspect, it's, it's like trying to keep something hot or keep something cold. It always wants to swing back to the middle, doesn't it? It wants to swing back to its fulcrum. True? If you have a hot bowl of soup, it gets cold. If you have a cold ice cube, it's getting warmer. Making sense? Because... Because if you try to manifest at this level, okay, you have to hold it at one side. Does that make sense? You have to do things to it. It always wants to swing back. And so this is why most people have a really hard time in life 
because they're, they're saying this is good, this is bad. They're, they're coming, they're, they're, they're only in this bottom place. Does, it, does, this, does this land, hey? This is why uh, we, we must not create from, from there. So, so we must ri rise up. And so it's such a terrible, a terrible showing of balance. This has nothing to do, this cross with a circle really has little to do with Christian religion or anything um, for, for our purposes. But, um, but there you go. This is supposed to show balance, okay? So, so when, you, when you, your unconscious is looking for harmony and looking for balance, a, a good way to put the unconscious is the, the unconscious balance point. Hear, hear this out. The, the unconscious balance point there, okay, that's looking for harmony. This point here, really get it. This is the center of the fulcrum for the, the pendulum swing. Where does this balance come from? This balance point that the fulcrum is attached to. This balance gets passed down from your source code and the superconscious, from your family source code, gets passed down. And then also from your decisions that you've made. But this is the balance point. The alchemists were the first ones to say you must rise above. See, the power isn't in, in hot or cold or abundance and poor or in, in strong or weak. That's not where the power is. The power is rising up to the point of the fulcrum or the pen. See, that, that's where the power is. If you take that away, there's no longer anything for it to swing on. And so th this is when it was the first thing when it said you must raise, raise up above you know, the good and the bad, you raise up above it, you, you come to this point where there is no good, there is no bad, you're just at the point. Uh, this is this what it talks about, you know, you coming up and, 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 and into the, the next plane. Does that make sense? A higher perspective. And, and everything you read about alchemy, it always talks about, you know, get to the higher perspective, you know, move, move up. So, so this middle place, your unconscious is always seeking balance. And seeking balance with your past, with your future, what's safe, and then the instructions that were passed down to you from, from the, the source field, which is you as well. So this drawing at the top says that there's this huge field of information, okay? And just so you know, these circles look relatively the same, but, but, but this circle is, a, is a, uh, a, an, an infinite... Um, it, it, it's it's infinite inside confined spaces, which which actually sounds like an untruth. Infinite inside confined spaces. Ha, however, if you've ever looked at the Mandelbrot set or you understand pixels uh, and, and how that works, you 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 truly get that a fractal is infinite inside a defined set. And, and anyway, it's much bigger than this. It's the ocean and you're the drop. It's the ocean and you're the drop. And, and, and many of us get this confused, hey, is that, uh, that you know, we, we make up the ocean together as a collective unconscious. I mean, that's what Carl Jung talked about, a, a collective unconscious, we make it up. Yet we have a super conscious awareness inside that collective unconscious. And when we become it again, this is where we can shift and move it, okay? Now, when you say, okay, uh, so we're talking about me, this is all you, you see? This is all you. These are the three aspects of you, self, soul, source, right? Self-conscious, unconscious, super-conscious. This is, this is all, this is all you. True, it's all, it's all you. And, and we, must, we must start living from this place. It's all us. We, we don't really desire, though, as much as people uh, would think, we don't really desire just to live up here in the source field the whole time. But we, we don't really desire that. You know, uh, that's why we've come down to have this experience down here. And so there's this, there's this way that you must, you must orient to creating, okay? So first, if you try to create here, 
in the self-conscious, you're simply going to always have resistance. You're always going to go for something that something is going to be in opposition with something else. And it will, it will just swing. Hey, it, it, it will simply just swing. And, uh, and, and it won't work out for you. You must, you must raise up. If you try to do anything in the, in the unconscious, the, the unconscious doesn't like change at all. So anyone talking about subconscious or unconscious change, that they're trying to work with the aspect of you that, that doesn't want to change. Does that make sense? It, it, doesn't, it doesn't want to change because this, this aspect that's seeking harmony and survival, it just wants to keep everything the same. Even if you've been, you know, however you orient to the world, it wants to keep everything the same. And, and so it's a very difficult, it's, it's a very hard thing to go into is, yeah, we're, we're going to go try to use the thing that doesn't want to change to try to change. And uh, it doesn't, doesn't make, it doesn't want to change. It's, this is your body. So, you know, this is your thoughts. This is really your body. So if you come up and out of the thing that just wants harmony, you know, to, to keep the body alive, to keep going, you end up in what, what others might call um, their higher self. Uh, that, that's a, that's a, a term I think that people might replace the word superconscious with. They might say higher self. I chose not to use the word higher self because it, it tends to have people think that high, higher is better than lower. Um, and, and that's not, not true. I suppose you could argue super conscious sounds better than self, but hey, it's my story. <laughs> It's funny. It's my story, and I chose it this way. But anyway, so su super conscious, <laughs> and, and so so the the super conscious is what first gave the instructions to the unconscious, and uh and <laughs> and you <laughs> don't get me laughing. <laughs> in the in your pre-verbal time, you had your super conscious that was tracked back through. Um, you know, maybe other lifetimes or, or maybe passed down genealogically. And it was, it was tracking for you information to pass down into the body, hey? So this is the feelings, this is the body, okay? And then this is where you get your, your thinking brain. So this is the body. So it's, it's passing information down on how to create human existence. In Lynn McTaggart's book, The Field, you can see that there's a field imprint available um, that plants and animals are already growing into. And you can see the imprint and they end up filling it out. Like, a, like a, it's just, it's absolutely wild. And, and so we get this information and, and it's there. The, the thing is, is most of us don't realize that uh, this information that's coming through, we can actually tap back into it. We can tap back into that because it's not separate from us. It is us. Does that make sense? We learn how to let go, let go of the limitedness, let go of here and tap back into it. And what's beautiful about our work and who's experienced this is you just give me permission and because I'm also uh, living in a super conscious field, so I'm also here and someone else is here and someone else is here, I can, I, I'm able to expand my awareness so that our super conscious is overlapping. Does that make sense, everyone? Give me a yes in the chat box if you understand this premise is that we, we all, we all um, show up as human beings. Uh, meaning that on, in, the, in a field structure, we live in the same field structure. And so if you give permission to that field structure to say, well, I give Chris, Chris, is, Chris seems like a trustworthy guy. He's here and he's going to help me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tune into it and allow him in to, to work there. Then I can see what's, what's causing resistance, what's bubbling up in the, in the body trying to seek harmony or what's in the, that's stopping this new, this new movement or this new choice. And we can come up here and we can, we can shift things. Does that make sense? We can, we can shift stuff. And it's, um, it's, it's such an amazing work. But here's what I want you to get. This is all you. Does it, do you follow it? It's all you. You want to go, well, what am I? You're all of it. You're all of it. You're a, uh, you're a creative spirit that has chosen to have a human experience. How do I know? Because that's what's happening. How do you know that, Chris? Well, you're there being a human. 
So there, that's how I know. <laughs> and and uh, and you, you're also an aspect of of, of source. And so, so you're able to go out there and make those shifts. And so, so when you ask her, well, what am I? Uh, well, well, what you are is, is that you're all of it. You're, you're all of it. And so the magnetic mind, what it, what it means is, is magnetic mind is, is not something that you, you must uh, change, I guess. It's about learning how to control what you're being a magnet of. Does that make sense? It's about learning to control what you're being a magnet of. Because, because you're already, you're already a magnet, so to speak. A magnet is a metaphor of um, pulling in, uh, pulling in, attracting. Hey? Yeah. And, and so when we do the work, when, when we're in this work, it's, it's understanding that, that, that you, we live in duality and we need duality to be able to experience. If, if we didn't have uh, duality, we wouldn't be able to experience anything. So we, so we must have it, okay? So, so many of us want to you know, get so annoyed at that you know, we have to feel frustration or sadness or, you know, and, and by the way, can we all just agree mortality sucks, hey? I think Karen Munger said this to me in a chat there. She goes, mortality sucks. And I was like, that's a true statement it does you know these these things these, these things we don't want like that, that they suck uh, however they're necessary hey they're necessary in order for us to be able to experience the, the opposite the the what what happens is <laughs> it's quite a profound statement i thought uh, you know that sucks i was like can't say it better that's right and, and the, the problem becomes when we we make our life about resisting um what we don't want because as soon as we are in resistance to that which we don't want, we've locked in a relationship with it. And uh, we're basically saying it's more powerful than me. You see? You see, it's, it's more powerful uh, than me. And, and so th that's, uh, that's why we must rise up to a place where we're, where we're happy. So, so a good metaphor is that the limited aspect of you is like an ice cube. You know, it's limited. It, it, we're trying to, we're saying we want it to be ice. And, and, and that's what we're trying to do. And if we try to move that ice, well, it starts changing to something else, goes to water, it evaporates. You know, you can hardly even hold it as you try to chant, what's it going to turn into? If, if you wanted to create the ice cube and have it in the way you want, the best thing to do is to rise it up, to, to evaporate it into, into a place where it's, where it's steam again, where it's a cloud. Now the, the cloud or steam or water vapor, it, it's the same, it's the same as ice, isn't it? It's the same as ice, it's the same, it's the same stuff, isn't it? It's the same stuff just at a different frequency. Ice is when it's not moving so much, it's condensed, it's come down, it's not moving. When you when you move it up and out, it, it's at a different vibe, a different frequency, it's at a different degree. We even know that it's at a different degree from its temperature. Steam is very hot, isn't it? So, it? so it's a different degree, but it's the same thing. Only when we rise up where the particles can expand and be free moving, can we then move it around and shift and change different instructions to bring it back down. Does this make sense, everyone? So, so you're not separate from the cloud of possibilities, even if you might feel like this condensed, you know, cold piece of matter, okay? You're also, you're also that. You just must allow your consciousness to open back up and expand. I, I think it's quite funny. Most of us think that our self-conscious is the most important, most important thing, don't we? Like, uh, you know, most, most, of, most people in, in the world think that the self-conscious, the thinking brain is the most important. But, but just, just, just really quickly, uh, what part of you is telling you that that's the most important part? Think about it. <laughs> Your self-conscious brain is like, yes, the self-conscious is the most important. <laughs> and so then we're all like, well, it must be. <laughs> because it's the it's the only aspect of us that we're we're living from 
So of course it's the most important. <laughs> It cracks me up. The, <laughs> what, <laughs> what happens is, is, is we must become self-conscious. And, and, uh, and as a child, we learn conditions. You know, we learn conditions. And we must learn conditions. If I do this, I'm good. If I do this, I'm bad. Hey? If I do this, it leads to happiness. If I do this, it can lead to pain. This is very important. We learn this. But as we learn this, we forget what we were before that. And, uh, and I, I've talked about this before, but uh, in most of us uh, as, as in our culture, we didn't have to have an initiation into adulthood, did we? It, it should happen around about 13 years old, an initiation into adulthood, may, maybe a bit earlier for, for women and a bit later for men, but, but around there. And, and what an initiation does is, is it helps people to step into a world where they, they're powerful and they're a creator. And, you know, I think um, uh, in a lot of uh, Aboriginal initiations, m many times the, the, young, the young initiate um, wouldn't actually make it. That's how hard the initiation was. They would, they would let, actually die. Um, and and it, it wasn't super common, but they would actually like you know it wasn't a, it wasn't a thing, and that they, they was part of part of it. You know, they would say, well, you know, didn't 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 make it. It was a real test. Does that make sense? Now think about our society. Oh, what well, so it was we would never allow anything like that, which um, which I think is which is which is a good thing, isn't it? But it's um, it, it's very important to understand that most of us are still living out, um, you know, this, this childish, um, self-conscious way of being. True. We haven't taken our power back and actually said we're all of it. So, so if I was to define what this work is, is a big part of it is, is taking your power back, okay? Uh, stepping back into the truth of who you are. Would you guys agree with that? It, and it, and it's, it's initiating yourself to being powerful rather than, this this crybaby down here when things aren't the way they want it. Oh, if you don't have it, I'm, I'm hopeless. I can't create it. Yeah, look how great I am. You know, this this pen, this it's quite when you think about it, it's quite childish, isn't it? Oh, yay, look at these, look at this amazing trinkets I have, or pieces of plastic, or look how cool my car is, or you know, look at this amazing person who thinks that I'm special, that they want to marry me. Oh, you complete me. Like all this, all this very childish energy of uh, out, things outside of them filling them up. See, the only way to, to, to live in the creative orientation is you realize you're the all. Hey, you realize you are it all. There, there's no car or person or house or accolade or fame that can fill, fill you, you up. You're you know, you're, you're super conscious, you're, you're, you're at all, you know, and you're, you're like standing at the buffet of life, choosing what it is that you want to taste. Do you know what I mean? You, you already got it all. And, and, and that's why, uh, yeah, Patrick laughs at the you complete me thing, but, but it, it is quite funny, isn't it? It's the you complete me. They're literally in this, in this world, instead of, you know, two, two holes, two complete, complete whole you know, satisfied, amazing human beings coming together to create a third entity, which is called their relationship. Does that make sense? One is whole and complete here. Another is whole and complete here. Together, there's now a third entity created, which didn't exist without two wholes coming together. Rather than in, in most relationships, there's a person here that, that doesn't feel good enough and relies on this person to make them feel good enough. And this person doesn't, doesn't feel needed unless this person needs them to feel good enough. And it's like 50% of a person, 50% of the person, and they end up with just one, hey? Yeah, right, right on. I like that, Pete. Um, probably going to steal it. <laughs> I mean, it's all about the dub. The W makes all the difference. It's actually, that's actually clever, isn't it? Things are more true when they have um, a fun little statement like that. Comes more true. <laughs> things are things are just more true when they rhyme or repeated. Hey. <laughs> uh, so so anyway, um, how how's this landing? Hey, 
how's this landing? You, you guys go, oh, I get it, I get it. When you when you return to to the all, you simply are able to choose what it is you'd love to experience. But from a place where you're not choosing it, scared of the opposite happening, you're not choosing it because of limitation, because you're not existing in that plane. So, so you allow yourself to become super conscious, to rise above the, the traditional mess, to, you know, to become the, the divine fool who's happy with failure and success and happy, but also understands divinity and then, and then chooses. And when, when you choose, what you're doing is you're using your consciousness to, to define uh, what it is that you'd like to see manifest. Basically, choosing is like getting the, the steam and, and uh, putting, you know, turning it into water, condensing it to water, and then putting it in an ice cube tray in the shape of the of what you want to create. It's basically it, isn't it? And, and saying this is this is what I would like it to look like, knowing that wh whatever it turns out doesn't define you. See, many of us live in a uh, that, that the things that we create define us. Our family defines us. Our relationship defines us. Our money defines us. And uh, man, that is that is way that is way down here. So, so knowing who you are is important. So, so what are you? <laughs> Diane says, does Harriet not complete you, Chris? Uh, and um, she's clearly joking with me. I complete me. I complete me. And then our, our relationship just creates so much synergy, just such, 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 you know, just such beautiful, you know, just experience. Hey, but not complete. I'm complete. She's complete. Does that make sense? When two complete people can, that are a loving life fill themselves up, are happy, it's centered, going for what they love on their purpose, fired up, doing what they just feeling great. And they come together in, in, in relation, in a relationship to each other, to two ships relating the third energy that's created between the two. It's not one plus one equals two. It's one plus one equals 11. The, the, the energy of a masculine and feminine coming together in, in a divine union, two holes creates such a, you know, those of you who understand math, it creates an exponential uh, growth instead of it being 0.75 plus times 0.75. And, and it's, uh, it's very important uh, to, to get this, hey, to get this, that your, your whole, you fill you up, you, you, you're, you're all, you're both masculine and feminine inside of you, you're complete. Anytime you're living in a space where someone else must fill you up or, or get something from whatever it is you're creating, you're simply giving it the power. Does this make sense? You're, you're simply you're simply giving it the power. And then if that has the power, you're, you're saying you're powerless to it or it's more powerful. And then if it was to go, you, you, you know, you end up in a really, a really tough place, don't you? Uh, and you're just not living powerfully. That's the that's the thing. You're not feeling you're, you're not living powerfully and you won't be able to create in other areas of your life right because because wherever you go there you are <laughs> and if in one of the most important things in human existence which is to to find a you know in, in all cells if you look at all cells or, or you go right to the base of what existence is um cells are seeking to pair bond with something else and uh they're seeking to pair bond and create a a third, a third energy that was their bond together. You know, you look at chemistry, hey, all of it is a desire to bond and create a, uh, a third energy, which is the combination of the two, which, which really is, we really is alchemy. But anyway, if you, if you don't, if, if you don't relate to relationship that way, it is, it is going to seek, seep and, and taint uh, all, all other aspects of your life. You'll need a business to fill you up. You'll need uh, the money to fill. Does this make sense, guys? You, you, you'll take you wherever. And so, so look, being whole is the goal. Being whole is the goal, Pete. Being whole is the goal. That is the goal. That is the goal. So, so what are you? You're all of these, hey? Does everyone get it? You're all of these. We must rise up become super conscious, observe what we would like to create, notice if there's any resistance to that creation, change the coding, 
so that we can easily move towards it as a superconductor, as a cloud, able to move whatever, take parts off, add certain things. Then we bring it down into reality and we move towards it. That, that's what we're doing here. Learning how to use your full power. So, so that's uh, that's uh, that took that took longer than I thought to talk through, but it felt good, felt good to share it. So, uh, so I hope that you guys like that. Uh, the second topic I have, <laughs> he says, forty minutes into the session. <laughs> oh, it's funny. Uh, the, the the second topic is. You, you become what you're fascinated by. You become what you're fascinated by. You know, you become what you're fascinated by. Uh, those of you who are on the on the session on the weekend, you, you know that I I ended up watching um, Frank the Frank Sinatra documentary, and what was um, very obvious to me in his story was that he was not a good singer when he started, and uh, and he, he was just so fascinated by it. And, and I, 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 wasn't, um, I wasn't able to shake it. And there was no reason for me to be up late watching that. I don't, I don't even really like his music at all, really. And not or even really knew anything about it. But for some reason, I was watching it. I do like biographies of, of amazing creators. And I, I would say he's a, he, he understood how to create probably at a... Uh, innate or unconscious level. I don't know if he had the ability. Mo most amazing creators don't have the ability to, to then explain it. But one thing that was obvious that I wanted to bring into my session today with all of you is that you become what fascinates you. Think about great sportsmen or musicians or singers or real amazing creators that they, they were so fascinated. If you, if you hear their stories, you know, Lady Gaga is a big inspiration. I think she's just absolutely, you know, phenomenally has the ability to overcome and, and focus and create. Uh, most artists, hey, are really, they understand the creative process, which is they're not their creation. They focus on it, they create it. It has a lifespan and then they move on to create the next song or the next album. They, they really... You can really learn a lot about creating from the arts, you know, re really. And, and uh, innovators, business people, you, people who are able to create something that wasn't there, they have an intimate uh, understanding of creation, which you can obviously apply to your life. But but what was what's really true? And you know, I read Da Vinci's um, biography. That's a huge long read. So uh, if, if you if you've got a, if you've got a good few weeks to read, a few hours a day, it's a big book. Well, Walter Isaacson, who wrote. Um, Steve Jobs' biography, and I think Arnold Schwarzenegger's one as well. He, he has an ability to take you know, one person's life and just make it huge. <laughs> anyway, uh, again, someone that was just, he followed his fascination. Followed his fascination. What, what truly fascinated him and, and then was all in on the fascination of it. And, uh, and, and I was examining that and thinking about him, and I wanted to bring it in for you guys, is, is you go, your, your end results... There's, there's a part of it where you need to become fascinated by it in a place where you're, you're so intrigued and curious and fascinated that you, you, you become entangled with it. Does that make sense? You become fascinated with, with what it is that you're wanting to create. I'm fascinated by this. I'm, fa I'm fascinated. And, and I kind of looked back at uh, you know, my journey to get here. And there's not many people who... Uh, that, that I can't talk to and say, oh, I did this thing or this thing. And I can't say, oh, I read that book on that or I've done that. And, and so when now when I'm teaching, it's coming through this, you know, decade and a half long fascination. It's, uh, it's quite cool that I, I didn't know that Julie Valentine was on here. That, that's uh, so cool to, to know. Because, you know, we were, I was fascinated with this and we were really engaged about six years ago and, and stuff. It's like the fascination. Get, get into this, get into this fascination with, with that which you want to see manifest and, and your structure, your, the, your creation is there. So, so I thought it'd be a nice question for all of us, you know, um, you know, how, when you're thinking about your end results, you know, the things you really, you really love, like that's in your land of plenty, that's, that's there, that's obvious that you want to create. 
uh, are you in fascination with it? Like how, like are, are you, you know, are you all in with it? Are you reading books on the topic? Are you just, are you enjoying, enjoying thinking about it, exploring it, being in it? Are you, are you fascinated um, by it? And I, I think it's a, I think it's a sure sign of someone who's, who's, who's so engaged with that, that they want to see manifest that, that it's going to happen based on the fact that they are so, so, so fascinated. Um, very cool. And yeah, hey, do you know what something that's really cool to get fascinated by is the, the creation process? Hey, now I, I, I can't think of a better thing to get fascinated by than how does creation happen and applying it, you know? Uh, it's kind of, to me, it's the, it's the biggest thing. Something I'm really fascinated about is, you know, uh, is, is, is the superconscious and creation and how it works and these sort of things. And, and this is part of becoming it, hey, because we, we, we are connected to the all, but there's just no one wants to experience everything. It, we, it would blow us up. Think about it, it really would, hey, if we had to try to experience everything, all thoughts, all emotions, we, we just couldn't do it. We couldn't do it. And, and so we must learn to decipher uh, what it is we do. We, we are going to go and experience, become fascinated by it. So to, to, here's what's interesting. So many people are fascinated with their problems. Too many people are fascinated with how they don't have it. Do you know what a, you know what something I see is uh, as a challenge for many of our community? They're way too fascinated by how the government and conspiracy theories are attacking them constantly. They're fascinated by it, and they become it. Their life becomes that there's something attacking them. Is it true? I did it. I was fascinated by it, and then I found myself, you know, always second guessing. Hey. And I'm not saying I'm not saying you can't be fascinated. Hey, did I say uh, if you listen to my words, I didn't say not to be fascinated by it. What I said is you're going to become what you're fascinated with. True. And, and it, it seems that people that, that can find themselves not creating a life they love, they end up becoming so fascinated with all the reasons why they cannot have what they love. Is it true? They actually fascinated with finding excuses to why they can't have what they want. Is it, is it true? Not all, not all. They're actually fascinated with uh, finding limitations. Okay? They're, that's what they're actually fascinated about. And as, as soon as it's not Monsanto, then it's the fluoride in the water. The next thing is that the, you know, there's, the Bilderberg group, and then there's uh, Illuminati, and what is money anyway? The Fed controls it, and then the, and, and it's all truth, say, and, and they but they just keep going and keep going, and as they're fascinated by all these problems, guess what? They're not creating what they love. And they're not creating what they love, and uh, and they they they're under the premise of well, I want to be informed, uh, they they lose themselves, and 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 then others. They're, they're fascinated by their sickness. It looks as though they're fascinated with, with being healthy, but they're actually fascinated with always having something that they need to be fixing on a health basis. Is it true? Yeah, you know, they, they watch Stephen Greer and, and they get fascinated. Why is this it's all covered up? And then they the truth about the, you know, World War II and that there's, you know, there's amazing underground bases on Antarctica and Hollow Earth and what's going on here. And, and, and it's, all, it's all fun and awesome information and we, we can all talk about it. But, but here's my point. You're going to become what you're fascinated by. True. So I'm not, does everyone understand? I'm not judging and I'm definitely not denying the truth of a lot of that stuff, am I? Because 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 we we all we all are awake here, hey. But but what I am bringing to your attention is you become what you're fascinated by. I remember, how many of you know Alexi? He might be listening. How many of you guys know Alexi? Yeah, you guys know Alexi. He's, he's on my team. About I think about a year ago, you know, uh, or well, no, about ten months ago, I think um, COVID was happening and stuff like that, and it was a 
it was all getting quite intense. I don't, I don't know if you guys remember, but at, at that time, you know, there were leaders in the field like David Wilcox saying, oh, you know, they're going to turn off the internet and uh, it's a global reset. And there's a, there's, there's ships off the, off the coast of the United States with trafficked children. And there's this, and there's that. there was, there was so much going on. Hey, it was, you know, and, and it's fine. It was just, it was just true, wasn't it? It was just so much. It was, it was, it was, it was intense. And uh, anyway, at, at, at that time, you know, Alex and I, we were, you know, we were talking about it, and you know, him and Mia, they were really getting into into watching it, and we we're like, well, what's going to happen? And then I remember one time uh, I said, to, I said to him, hey, I, you know, I've, I've stopped, I've stopped, sort of, I've stopped looking at it, and um, and we talked about it, and we were discussing, you know, his choices and stuff, and I think this is really important. I said, mate, you know, if you have time to watch that many, uh, if you have time to watch all that stuff, you, you have time to learn about property investing. You see? If you have time to be so fascinated with all that, well, you definitely have time to, to be fascinated about how to grow your money. You, have, you, have, you, you could be fascinated with how to influence. You see what I'm saying, guys? It changed the fascination. So you're not saying that there's something wrong with doing that. Oh, my suggestion is, is, is you become what you're fascinated by. You create what you're fascinated by. And, and asking yourself, well, what is, what is my self-conscious? What is it really fascinated as it, as it goes and, and does these things? Because behavior is the highest form of information. So what are you really fascinated by? If you took a time study of your of your last uh, 24 hours or, or seven days, what would you really say you're fascinated by? It's quite an interesting thing. This doesn't need an answer, but it's something to say, well, what I'm really fascinated by is setting myself up to get information to protect myself from this. Or I'm really fascinated. What am I really fascinated by? Hey, And uh, <laughs> good. Meg mine's a good fascination. <laughs> yeah. Make sense? Cool. So, so something to, to observe. What are you fascinated by? And I, and I think it's really good. You know, the, the end result of, of Alexi changing that fascination, he, he started to hold each other stuff, started reading different books, looking at different things. And I'm sure, I'm sure still in the background has, has uh, uh, an eye on, you know, the, the truth as well. And, uh, you know, I know that within the next six, I know he's got his, his house deposit ready. And, uh, you know, within the next uh, three to six months, he's going to purchase a home before the age of 30, which uh, I just think is absolutely incredible, hey? And, and, it, and, it, and, you know, I don't know if he's on here, but, but I love you, brother, and you're a fucking legend, eh? And, and, and changing your fascination is, is such an important thing because you're all of it. And so you, gotta, you always remember, you know, there's, uh, there, there's, there's different aspects of us all the time but, uh, but every aspect of you is always listening, isn't it? Every aspect of you is always listening. And we talk about silent instructions, don't we? And we say, well, what, what silent instruction are you giving to yourself as you sit there glued to the next thing saying, saying this is happening. Oh, I better click, I better know about this. You know, I better, I better learn about this thing. I better, you know, you know protest against, uh, against whatever it is. I had someone, uh, you know, Anyway, anyway, I think I think the point's made. Hey, you, you become what you're fascinated about, and you're you're all of these.